address mental illness isn't really talked about. And I and we don't want to celebrate mental illness at all because it when you're in the depths of it, you're totally not creative. Yeah. At all. Like yeah, you're, you're shut you're down. Just struggling. You're, 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 just, it's, you're a, just, it's a horrible, you're painful isolated. state. Yeah. So you're no, nobody's saying like, oh, that's a celebration. It's a very difficult struggle. Mm -hmm. But when you come out of it, there's something about that person that's able to, you know, draw from draw on these experiences. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Creative and Balance Podcast. Long time no talk. Apologies for the delay on episodes. Life got in the way and I'm happy to say I can put my focus back in this direction. And we got many pre-recorded episodes for you. And this one was very special to me. Joining us today is Michelle and Pedro. And they made this very deep documentary titled Drunk on Too Much Life. I watched it right before I did this interview the other month. And this led to one of the deepest and most important talks about mental health we ever had on the show. And I'm looking forward to listening back to this talk right now. Their documentary uh, follows the struggles of their daughter, Karina, and related to the show and creativity in a very phenomenal way. Art and creativity helped her with her battles with her own mental health. And there's just so many layers to it. And I remember as this conversation went on, we got deeper and deeper in the subject. And I walked away from this just feeling with a broader perspective of understanding the topic and also just the feeling of wanting to be better and be good to one another and have the patience to reflect on the things you may not fully understand. But uh, before we get into it, uh, I want to thank Michelle and Pedro for making this documentary and also their daughter for being open to sharing her story because I think this is very important and I think it's a, a film that everybody should see and we'll keep in touch on when you guys can watch this or if it's available on VOD or anything like that. But I'm going to let this episode speak for itself and here we go. I purposely waited right before this interview to give me enough time to watch the film so it's so fresh in my mind. And I just want to say, like, uh, I was completely moved by it. And uh, oh, I feel like this is something that absolutely everybody should watch. And uh, I don't know. I, I actually, I'm actually feeling emotional going into this interview. And um, I guess to start, uh, I want to know, um, what was your inspiration to kind of tell your, your daughter Karina's story and uh, actually start documenting it and share it with people? Well, okay, I guess uh, we are filmmakers, I guess we're producers and, and uh, story editors and directors by, by training. Like we both worked in the broadcast media, Pedro still does for many, many, many years. And so it was kind of natural for us to start documenting our life, our journey. But yeah, it was kind of like this idea of kind of making life a work of art. Sorry, we have a cat that's being- Oh, that's cat. okay, cute. <laughs> <laughs> so uh making life a work of art and working through it was like a form of narrative therapy yeah in a mm -hmm. way we were we were like we were kind of uh compelled to do it because we just came in the situation where our daughter was really struggling in the mental health system and we weren't sort of getting the uh <laughs> the help we want we, we needed essentially and we just thought you know Basically, we wanted to deal with this kind of subject in a way that was kind of poetic and personal. And uh, and in a way that really, uh, well, hopefully people could relate to, because, you know, we all, it's just like these family ties, you know, and, and this idea of just like, if somebody in your family is suffering, like it affects the whole group and and, and how do you deal with that and and where do you turn? So we so the film is a journey, basically, of what, what happened with us. With yeah. our daughter, and we were make we made sure to be uh, very ethical because so everybody in the film like it's um, we don't have any talking it was very we we didn't want having worked in the media or work in the media we didn't want talking heads mm -hmm. we wanted a very personal grounded like earthy like up ground up kind of approach conversations conversations yeah. and we had to make sure that everybody was lucid and well when yeah. we were shooting. Yeah, and it, it, that uh, really came off that way too. Like, like you mentioned, like it felt like you're like sitting in Imperial Pub with you guys, or just with like all these different uh, 
people you've had on the documentary having these uh, very candid and very deep conversations, which uh, I appreciate. And some, sometimes like uh, the type of conversations that people are shy to talk about is uh, mental health or mental health is a very like uh, sensitive topic to a lot of people and just to dive deep in into it. And I feel like this film itself can give people a better understanding and um also like it you dive into like there's a unique mystery to it too where it's like you can't just label a person oh this person's a schizophrenic this person's manic depressive it's like everybody's kind of their own unique experience and talking about like just the stigmas of that too there's just there's just so many layers with the film it's almost like uh, doing this interview it's like where do i start with <laughs> i have a thank i have you. pages oh, of bullet you. points usually i have a couple questions and it's just like wow where, I yeah, where no. do i yeah, go well, with this tree it's true we, we will it was also done for my masters of fine arts that do, and documentary media so we had a uh, there's a lot of, it was a very collaborative project from everybody from the head of film at Ryerson to, you know, Pedro yeah. and I are both collaborators. Um, yeah, but no, but thank you for saying that. That's that's yeah. very sweet because I, I feel like that's, you know, we wanted to give people um, different perspectives and, and especially from people that have been through this kind of thing and had, had you know, what the people call lived experience, which means like, you know, people who have, who have gone through these experiences that are very extreme and come out on the other side and really can share their their insights and and, and their kind of lessons. And, and and we were very receptive to these people. And these people um, who, who taught Karina, who really encouraged Karina to, to find her path um, were really just as important, if not more so to be honest, than the medical, like, you know, and ultimately, you know, it's it's not that the you know it's it, not that there wasn't weren't great people, and to even psychiatrists and, and nurses that really treated Karina really well and gave us insights. But people who've gone through this stuff really can can really teach you a lot, you know. And that's what the film is a lot about. That yeah, they call it peer support. So like the film is like a love letter to Karina from us, but it's also a love letter to the peer support movement. We and that means people that with lived experience teaching other people with lived experience about how they got through it. And personally, we found that almost I I, I know this is a very controversial statement, but as effective as psychiatry, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's more practical, right? It's like more like you know, okay, you have a voice, maybe, and you know, instead of making it into a negative thing, how can you conceptualize that voice, or how can you reframe it so it's not kind of so it's helping you. So it's like pointing out stuff that you have to need to change, or, or people just saying, you know, these are not, these are not like things that we, you know, maladies. These are dangerous gifts. These are things that we can grow from, and they give us special insights and stuff. So it's yeah. just changing the perspective of what it, what these things mean, you know. Yeah, and we've had that perspective in our culture, like the whole idea of the the, the mad artist or the mad mm -hmm. crazy genius. Mm -hmm. Um, but right now, culturally, we're at this moment where the what they call the biomedical paradigm has kind of taken over. It's all, it's like we found it was all about medication, and we were like, uh, yes. this is not this is not just biochemical. Like, and and sometimes the medications don't work. Like with us, you know, like it took a long time, uh, and you know, and sometimes we, we we thought there'd be a magic pill that all of a sudden it's like, oh, our you know our daughter's back to normal but mm -hmm. it doesn't work like that you know and it's like they have to come up with like you know because there's like every every all the pills have a side effect and all and this one it, you can't use this one with this one and it's yeah. like this find the combination and even then it's not a perfect thing right and so there's all these misconceptions that we just thought like when we first when we first got to them it's like oh, okay they'll just give her a pill and this, this will go away no you know we have to it's something you have to deal with and it's a long-standing situation right so yeah i can't even yeah. imagine how that process is like I, I can see like maybe they give her like one pill for one thing and then it does something else to your brain where it doesn't balance it out right. or anything like it's it's so so complicated and people try to make it not uncomplicated in a way right. like how they speak about it and uh right, what, right. yeah yeah exactly. 
Uh, sorry to cut you off. I feel, I think there was no, like a no, little no. delay there, <laughs> but, but um, yeah, another thing just on my mind. One thing I I felt that was so beautiful about the film, like uh, beyond the struggles of the journey of like Karina and everything, it also points out a lot of like the beauty, like just mm -hmm. having those conditions. Like there's gifts with within it, with whether it's just art or poetry and everything and it's just seeing how she could like tap into that and also have it as like a like the most healthiest escape possible too and making something beautiful about it it's, it's it was very yeah. nice to see no, well said that's exactly yeah. it that's yeah I and mean, we found that like at the hospitals they just didn't uh, maybe things have changed now but they didn't celebrate like uh you know there are many times when pedro would bring in his guitar okay we have to do sorry no, we have no, to no. deal with that. <laughs> I, I love the cat <laughs> the cat yeah, cameos the cat no, yeah. <laughs> that was so cute he just jumped on your shoulder yeah <laughs> she's, like, she's obsessed with him yeah. um, so, so, what i was gonna say is that that uh there are many times when uh at the hospital where uh, you know, Karina was so, uh, like, you know, wasn't able to communicate using words even, right? And mm. so Pedro would bring in his guitar and sing. And all these kids, because the, the, these units are filled with th these kind of conditions sometimes happen around the early 20s when you're just about to launch into the world. And so these 21-year-olds or 20 would come to uh, Karina's room almost like I hate to say it, but like zombies almost and they would sing and play we, he would sing and play great songs yeah I mean we were they, 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 everybody was just like, <clears throat> excuse me very hungry for mm. connection right and um, yeah like Michelle was saying like they really can't connect with words because it becomes you know um when you're in some, when you're sort of in a in an ep so-called episode or like sort of I was kind of somewhere else Every, the words just become very um, ineffective way of communicating. So, so doing something that we, you will find a connection in other ways, like drawing, painting, or doing art, or I mean, sorry, doing music, or it's mm -hmm. just, it's the way to connect in that moment. It's more, much more, and it's actually very deep. And they, people can express certain deep things of what they're going through, through visuals or through music or, you know, so it's like, and that's really, it's expressing the, the inexpressible, expressing something that's mm. so deep, that's that beyond words in a way, right? So yeah, definitely. I, I always believe there's power to like the certain type of energy you put out. And it's, it's cool to hear that little behind the scenes story of like patients coming to the room just to kind of vibe out to the music or whatever, too. Because exactly. yeah. like, like you mentioned, it's probably not happening around the hospital. And all of a sudden, it's just a they just finally feel something, you know, instead That's of somebody right. trying to treat them a way that they read in a textbook or something. It's just, exactly. yeah. Well put. That's well put. Well put. Yeah, yeah, it's like That's bringing, it. we were just, this film is just trying to bring the humanity back into the discussion mm -hmm. because, you know, the, the, the diagnostic, I mean, it's ridiculous how many diagnoses Karina has received like it's it's a, a joke almost it's like every time she goes into the hospital it's like she has to have a new diagnosis and I'm like come on like yeah. this is ridiculous let's talk about the human being the story behind the pain yeah it's you like they're, they're 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 way of kind of um not that I mean I'm not saying about this over there like I'm not saying that it's like a big conspiracy against people who are struggling but just the, the approach now seems to be to categorize and to kind of think like, okay, and people are so into categories now too. Like it's like it's almost like taken over. Like you know, it's like, you know, I, I people start identifying with these categories, and you know, and that's helpful for some people because it's it just means that they get they're getting the need that you know sometimes that's a very liberating feeling to just kind of go, you know, this is okay now I understand where all my issues come from. I'm, I have this condition, but but it's not that simple. Like people can't be divided into little categories like mm -hmm. some people just don't fit into those categories a lot of people right it's like a combination of many things and it's like experience and it's like the categorization has kind of gone too far it just feels like it's kind of gone like it's become the next the thing that 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 the way the system works and it's there's mm -hmm. so much that falls between the cracks right it's not like nobody fits into that a specific box in the way that they want to fit in right or that people want them to fit in 
because yeah, it's, it's not like, like breaking that. a leg like you know mm-hmm. I yeah medicine, medicine wants it that simple but it's called like, the mind is the seat of consciousness it's a brain. Right? i mean the brain is so <laughs> yeah complex, yeah right? and i i think some of like the best parts too of the film was like like kind of to touch on like what you guys were just talking about like the people and the medical thing they're just like okay we're gonna give them a pill like this will fix it but I think it showed that some of like the healthy healthiest uh, things for Karina was to talk to other people who were much older than her who went through the same thing and actually know like the same a similar experience and then maybe they've grown like how to deal with it like if you're hearing like voices or seeing things and stuff like that and like also right. to not be ashamed of that and almost make it become like this is who I am and this is something I need to just uh cope with or just understand a bit more and that was so fascinating to me yeah and well said because a lot of it is about shame right like if people feel ashamed and then that's what shuts that's what shuts the dialogue down it's like sort of like you know oh you know like you don't people don't want to feel uh pressured or i mean sorry ju- sorry judged or or kind of given uh you know sort of like made to feel lesser than because they, they're having these experiences and opening up about them and having and talking to people who can relate to that is so it's so like wonderful and beautiful for these for for people that are going through that because it's like they get acceptance, right? There's, a, there's an acceptance and a self-acceptance, which is very important, like you said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well like, do- I don't know, uh, Dr. Gabor Mate, were you familiar with his work before you saw the film? Oh, no, I wasn't, but now I'm intrigued after watching yeah. it. Yeah, he's amazing. Like, he's an incredible thinker. And and uh, so he told me, you know, just like the value of peer support, he said, and he was thinking of it as a, as a doctor. And he said, when you when a psychiatrist or a doctor or even a therapist walks into the room, the person is a little bit, there's a power imbalance and you're, you know, he talked about it in terms of the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. And when you talk to a peer, like with somebody with lived experience, you're relating to them as equals. And he said, right away, you relax, your ears literally yeah. open up, yeah. you're more receptive to information, you're not scared. And so you're learning a lot more, you're able to heal. A lot yeah, faster. and it almost turns into a dynamic where even within that conversation, they could be learning from each other in the moment right. too, just by just the natural flow of finally meeting somebody who knows exactly how I feel instead of, again, somebody who's read it in a textbook and doesn't have like that empathy to really understand it. Exactly, because it's like you're, you're, you're exactly what you're saying. It's like, you're not, you're not like this this person that's being studied or, or, or kind of object or, or whatever, or like separated or made to feel different. You are talking to somebody as, as a person, like face to face, you know, experience to experience, like the same level. And that is a very different experience than, than being looked at and being, being, th- being thought of as somebody who has an issue or a problem, um, which of course, you know, the struggle is, it's not, 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 not that the struggle is not real. Of course the struggle is real. But getting in there and being able to, to kind of sort it out and not be thought of as like this this other, like this person who's just like going through this thing. And it's like, okay, you're over there and I'm treating you. And no, it's like sort of like much more connected. It's super healing for people, right? And we didn't just, just quickly uh, yeah. as a sideline here, we didn't have time to go into the film for that. But so Pedro, as you, as you heard in the film, had cancer, it's in remission, mm-hmm. thank God. But uh, at Princess Margaret Hospital, which is the you know, you know, huge hospital here in Toronto uh, that treats cancer, he, they treated him holistically. Like mm-hmm. there was a nutritionist, he got a psychiatrist that talked to him. I'm like, what, your psychiatrist talks to you? And he's like, yeah, like for an hour and a half. And like, he had, you know, there, there was all, it was like a holistic look at your health. And what we found in the mental health system is like, it becomes just about the pill and sometimes restraint and just like you're you're kind of left to fend for yourself that most of the kids most of the people at the at the, in the psych wards were vegetarian and they'd get they, they had no vegetarian options it'd be shitty oh, food yeah. from like french fries and and hamburgers you know the thing about it the, the, the hospital is meant to treat emergencies so they basically wanted to get you out of there as soon as possible, right? Essentially, mm-hmm. that's that's the way yeah. hospitals are built. So it's not this long-term care in the same way as 
people, you know, so it's like they, 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 they want to basically sort of quiet you down, get so you to date you. you, and then get you out the door. And that's, and I understand because it's they're, they're busy. They have a limited amount of beds. It's just the way the system works. And I, and I get it, but it shouldn't be that the hospital is the only way that the only place people can go, because it feels like if it, you know, if you're, unless you know, if you're in an emergency state, great. I'm glad the hospital's around. It's, it's the best place. But if you're just sort of like struggling, having issues and like, and it should, you know, and, and, and because if you go to the, if you, if you go to the hospital to say, I'm hearing voice, I'm struggling, they say, are you, basically their question is, are you a, a, a harm to yourself or others? And if you're not, well, it's like, oh, you go, uh, I, there's you no go. help, right? Yeah. There's no they're help. Just like, oh yeah, they're going to be fine. Whatever back into the yeah, yeah. Type of thing. Yeah. It's like yeah. I see in the film that's either the, the home, the streets, or the hospital in North America and Europe's different, but there's more community mental health care. But that model of community, that community connection is just, we're missing that component. Huge. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, I live in Toronto as well, too. And I see it when I walk down the street, too. It's just uh, a lot of people, uh, they're in a lot of need, too. And again, somebody might walk by and see like a homeless person, maybe shouting something on the street. And they're, it's kind of like the the attitude, like, oh, they're just crazy or schizo or whatever. But I don't know. There's a part of me that just feels like so empathetic. Like there's more layers to what's happening. And like a lot of like, I feel like their situations aren't even their fault in a way. It's just didn't have the proper family or treatment. And almost like the, the, the quote you said at the end of the movie, like you're, you're only as like strong as the force around you, or I'm probably butchering the quote, but that, yeah. uh, oh, no, that's absolutely right. That kind of stuck with me as well, too. It's just maybe they didn't have the proper support system or don't have any family in town, and it just spiraled down into like a hopeless state. And exactly, well, and a lot of those people, like like what Gabor talks about, he was the first one to. For your viewers, his name's Dr. Gabor Mate, um, but he he was the first one to talk about that pain that sometimes comes out, and the, say the, the the guy that's screaming on the street that that that's embedded in trauma like that's like that's his emotional reality you know what you were kind of implying i think is that people get blamed like when you see people on the street it's almost like oh you know you're like that and they don't take into account of like their life experience who they are like it's almost like nobody really has empathy for people it's almost like they become the other you know and it's like and it's like quite frankly you know to be completely honest with like you know ever since we started like our since our karina started developing the issues and 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 going and struggling and going through kind of extreme experiences ever since then it, the, the way i see people in the street has completely changed right because i feel like these are just people that have just gone through a lot of pain and have a lot of trauma and are very sensitive ultimately and we're treating them like dirt, you know, and it's like, and that's, yeah. that's a societal issue where it's like, oh, you're not a productive citizen. You're, you know, you're out in the street and you're kind of like, and it's like, yeah, but they're, they're really in pain. Right. And like, people don't even acknowledge that in a way they're not even seen. They're not, they're ignored. Right? Yeah. Or yeah. even pushed out. Like uh, we example this year in Toronto, like, uh, like all those little camps and like the park and stuff. I, I, I saw like on the news, just like almost a riot squad, just, going in there and sweeping through like using violence just to get them out and where like the question in my mind is like where do you want them to go now exactly it's not they're treating it they're just yeah like get the fuck out of the park type of attitude and now it's like yeah yeah, you know all these hipsters want to walk around the park well it's like great i mean they have the right to walk into the park but these people have nowhere to go and that's like Mm -hmm. it's such a difficult situation yeah, a lot of it's, we won't get into capitalism, but it, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's true. hard not to think of it as yeah. a problem with capitalism too, because you're seen as productive, you have to be a productive citizen, and if mm-hmm. you're not a productive citizen, so like, I mean, artists struggle enough, like artists have these issues too, so I worked oh, at yeah. Fashion Television for like four years, and I don't know how many designers have struggled with mental illness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, very, the very world, common. The, world. the art world, the music world, poets, yeah. like, it's like impossible. Yeah. Let's just face it. There is a connection between creativity and and struggling and strugg- struggling with mental your mental health. There, I, I'm just gonna say it. I think there is yeah. a connection. Yeah, I believe it too. I see a pattern too on the show. Like, uh, 
I'm uh, over 150 episodes deep now, uh, talking to just artists all over the place from musicians, comedians, filmmakers, pro wrestlers, authors, like everything. And there seems wow, to be cool. um, an underlining tone of like a lot of like the conversations I have were like in earlier in life before they found whatever their gift was, they internally like felt like an outcast, but then right. tapping into that art almost connects them with everybody in like an opposite sense you know it's just like leaning into it and I think you mentioned in the film or Karina mentioned uh like feeling like a jagged puzzle piece that doesn't fit anywhere but then once they start like tapping into their creativity too it's like goes from feeling disconnected to connected with everybody and you think of like some of the some of the greatest like like top selling artists like for example, like a Michael Jackson, everybody's like, oh, that guy's crazy. And he's got the number, once he starts making music, he's got the number one album. Everybody wants to buy it. They feel connected to whatever that thing is he tapped into to right. express Kanye. himself. You know, and, Kanye, yeah. Yeah, like Kanye it. too. Yeah, yeah, that's another good example. Yeah. Uh, no, and then, uh, yeah, it's a lot of people. Yeah, it's a lot of mm-hmm. yeah. I think it's like, it's like all these people that have just like, art is their, is their, way of keeping stable stable. keeping sane and also like you said to something greater yeah right like it is it is something greater it is something it's like intangible like it's they're they're able to go in like you know kevin in the film he talks about that like artists are able to go into what he calls the wormhole and come back and bring Mm. stuff back with them and i think it is all of that kind of magic and and creativity associated with you know, art and um, I guess mental illness isn't really talked about. And I, and we don't want to celebrate mental illness at all because it, when you're in the depths of it, you're totally not creative yeah. at all. Like yeah, you're, you're shut you're down. Struggling. You're, you're you're, just, it's, you're a, just, it's a horrible, you're painful isolated. state. Yeah. So you're not, nobody's saying like, oh, that's a celebration. It's a very difficult struggle. Mm-hmm. But when you come out of it, there's something about that person that's able to you know, draw from, draw on these experiences. So nobody, I'm not saying, oh, let's celebrate that state because it's horrible. I mean, yeah. Van Gogh killed himself, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you don't want that. But one, the question is also like, would he, you know, if he had been highly medicated like they would do now, would he have created all the art? Yeah, and also if he, had, if he had been accepted and, and, and part of the yeah. community and, and had access to people who were, that were able to work, work, you know, you know help work him through this, Situ- yeah. situation in his feelings he might have been a, he might have not killed himself you know yeah, so it's like it's like that it's a very delicate that's why they call it thin on them film they talk about dangerous kiss because it there is a there is it's it's not it's a complicated thing but ultimately there is a gift like you were saying there is a gift aspect to it and there, there's there's a struggle but then there's also like seeing deeper seeing higher it's like because you know when people go into these states they um they go lower and higher than most people ever have, right? It's like they go really go into the depths of their psyche and then they're really struggling. And then they go into these ecstatic states. So just mm-hmm. that range of just like, you know, most of us live in the middle. They're, they're way living in the extremes. That's that's kind of a gift to, to be able to access these places, right? Like to kind of be able to go there if you can. And a really talented mystic or an artist can do that. They can go in come out you know which is like incredible. yeah we don't have any resources to teach people these things you know like at all like and that's why that came out in the film like branching off into kind of a mysticism or shamanism um you know one of the huge the biggest quotes in the film is by joseph campbell who's a famous mythologist american writer and he said the you know the psychotic drowns in the water that the mystic swims in with delight I and love so, that part of the film, by the yeah, way, too. So yeah, it's yeah. like teaching what we're doing in the film is teaching Karina how to swim, mm-hmm. essentially. Or pointing the right way. Or but po- you know, we, don't, we don't have those, yeah. but, we, but we, we can point her in the right direction for people who have been there, who have kind of gone to, you know, been in that state. And, and like you said, are older and, and, you know, and then they've been through all of it. And when you talk, when you talk to people who have, who have been through these things, they've gone through very extreme situations where they're on the street and stuff like that. And all, like most of the people we feature in the film have had very rough times. 
-hmm. but they've come out and they're thriving and they and they're out there to to, to learn from right yeah i agree yeah. and you, you touched on the the whole mystic aspect too and uh yeah I, I wanted to say like i really loved that part of the film and i didn't expect it to go into that direction as well and uh it's uh one one thing that gave me total goosebumps was the whole thing of when Karina mentioned she she saw two shadows behind you, and then you going to the doctor and finding out uh, you you had a, a problem with your lungs and everything. And That's right. yeah, how how are you feeling now? By the way, are you still thank you? Good? No, I'm feeling well, thank you. Like I'm yeah. uh, sort of in remission, like thankfully. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, it's I've been I feel strong. I'm working. I'm. Yeah, I feel totally back to normal, thankfully, not good. But it's, yeah. I feel, yeah, I feel good, man. Thank oh, you. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Yeah. That's good yeah. to hear. And uh and yeah, and it's like it's interesting too, because I've had like uh some experience that I'm almost like shy to talk about like on the oh, air too, yeah. where it's like uh I uh a lot of times like when I'm feeling a lot of stress, like I will slip into like sleep paralysis. And oh yeah. In that too. state, I've uh seen things that per either predicted something or was like almost the opposite of what people think sleep paralysis is it like kind of showed me like a beautiful experience and from I'm uh, 36 now and I've been having that since I was 13 years old and oh, wow. always in the back of my mind I always feel like there's some layers to the world that we can't see or maybe understand and it's uh even talking about it too i still don't have answers or whatever well, have, you, have you seen that documentary on it yeah yeah and what i what i didn't like I, about the documentary I, yeah. is is they only talked about the scariness of it when yeah. i feel i feel and not only feel i know you can tap into a beautiful side of it where, so, can, can I, so can i ask you one more question about that so yeah. you are so you are paralyzed in the bed like you know you like you, you feel like you're always you have some awareness you're paralyzed mm -hmm you're seeing beautiful things like what do you what do you kind of yeah so um yeah to get into it uh at first it was always terror it was exactly like the movie the nightmare when and uh <coughs> sorry i gotta clear my throat there but um as i was it was happening so often when i was a teenager that i was like scared i'm like what's happening am i going to hell like what is these visions yeah. in sleep paralysis so I started uh, reading online, like all these different forums, uh, talking about uh, the states and stuff like that. And a lot of it even connected to shamanism and taking yeah. like DMT or ayahuasca in a way too. And at the time when I was reading this, I didn't know what all that was. So it goes down another rabbit hole of like reading it. But it's like, uh, basically what I was reading is you can tap into these states naturally. And some people do it by accident. And some people can actually meditate themselves into sleep paralysis but uh wow. one thing i learned uh or even read just something simply somebody wrote on a forum it was it was so vague and all it said is if you learn how to relax yourself um something beautiful can happen and oh, i just got goosebumps saying that and oh. so <laughs> i read that when i was 16 years old and for some reason like when it would happen i I never relax myself. I'm like freaking out. I'm like, wake up, wake up, wake up. Interesting. And then one day in my college life, I was like probably like 22, 23. So this is years, years later. Um, I fell into sleep paralysis. And for some reason, while I was laying there, I remembered reading that. And I'm like, okay, I'm terrified. Let's see what happens when I relax. And like, I was even seeing like a being and stuff like that. And I just stopped and, oh man, I'm getting goosebumps just like talking about like I'm back there or whatever. Oh, and, yeah, it, yeah. and it almost felt like I wasn't my body. It was like a pulsing energy and it didn't, oh. it didn't feel scary. It felt good. And uh, like, almost like it's really hard to explain. Like um, it felt like a rush in my brain, almost like I was getting thousands of like that feeling when you have an orgasm at once, just like right. energy, just like, pulsing and it, it turned into like this outer body thing where I can just kind of like float around float around and then you were still in your bed like you were still paralyzed I bed. was still at, I believe so but it felt like I was out of right. the body but just not my body like uh 
uh, whether it's like a soul or an energy. Mm. But every time I would wake up from that state, I would shoot back to the bed and just like, right. I wake up and be like, holy fuck. And um, really interesting. Yeah. And um, the one most like it, that's happened to me, like uh, probably about like 25 times those states. But the, there was one really profound one where I was going through like some of the worst time of my life. I had eviction notice on my door. I didn't know what I was going to do. And mid afternoon, I'm like, I'm just going to take this nap. Like it was almost like a depression nap. Like I was just like, yeah. I just need to lay down. And then all of a sudden I slipped into that state and I took that whole energy thing happened again, but it was almost like this shadowy figure that didn't seem like a bad figure like mm. grabbed me and pulled my hand out of my body which turned into that thing and just like shot me into space and I woke up like feeling amazing and like almost wow. feeling like there's more to life than my little problems like there's some magic here like I, right. I can't even believe I'm saying this on the podcast oh, like, no, I'm usually so shy Talk of, that's no, the thing is that's, that that's science, really scientific uh yeah thank you like scientific reductionism and 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 rationalism has taken over and i think and we're not saying oh let's just get rid of like we're not saying let's yeah, go back yeah. to the medieval time no, the dark yeah. ages we're just saying let's we're shutting ourselves we're off we're shutting ourselves off from this whole other range of experiences and what just quickly what you said about the fact that you were all of a sudden saw it in a positive yes, way exactly. was that's a huge part of the film is because we see mm -hmm. these experiences so negatively Karina off if those sees those she has negative voices and negative visions but if she lived in a culture that said you know what you're it's okay you're special you have this gift you can you can tune into these realities and we love you and we support you and we don't see you as a as a freak then yeah, yeah. maybe and she and everybody who says says the same thing is that those voices it would be positive they would become yeah. shamans yeah, yeah no, definitely like yeah. Very, it's very a, like an ancient people. practice you know that's lost that's it right. is and that's uh, right. it, well, hey, we're, we're, we're educated. We're not, we're not, uh, we're not saying, uh, you know, there's valid validity to scientific rationalism, but it's a limited tool. And what's happened is it's taken over our whole yeah. way of thinking. We cut off, we cut off so much, you know, and like, the, like, cause you're not alone. Like, you know, I think mm -hmm. I've had experiences like that were very mystical kind of experiences. And then, you know, and it's like the same thing. And, and, and I, you, you put it so well, it's like that kind of sense of you just like, because it's so unusual you tend to kind of fear it first but then we if you just like kind of like no no i'm just gonna relax and i mean you know the there's a real um parallel to be drawn like when somebody does like a lot of psychedelic drugs because mm -hmm. it's like because you know people like the, who do ayahuasca need a guide because um it's such an intense experience that they can easily kind of get sidetracked or get freaked out by the by the intensity of it and, they, and if somebody just kind of says no, no, relax. You'll be okay. Just yeah. go through the experience, right? It's the same thing, you know. And like the Buddhists even say, I mean, they, the Tibetan Buddhists even think that when, when somebody dies, you have to do that. They say, no, no, it's okay, because it's like the person rejects, like they sees everything as demons at first, because it's like, holy shit, what's happening to me? But those demons can become angels if you just change your perspective. I mean, the Buddhists, I mean, the Tibetan Book of the Dead talks about that. Like you have to mm. things present as demons, but no, they're not demons. They're just your fears. You have to turn them around. It's like we have all, we project all of our fears too, right? Anyway, yeah, that, that, yeah. and and that's we did deal with no, that in great. the film. Yeah. We our only reference sometimes when Karina went into these extreme states was horror films. Like mm, we only yeah. like I'm, it's like we only had that model, and and now I'm like ah, horror films are just projections of our fears. I can watch any horror any film, hor like, whatever. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because they don't scare me anymore because I see them in a different light. I see yeah. them as like. You know, like it's it's different. Our fears. Yeah, yeah the know? same. Like even when I was younger and I was having the bad versions of sleep paralysis, yeah. I couldn't watch any of the demonic stuff. I'm like, this is too close to home. And now similar vibe as you. It's just like I see it as a projection and everything. And uh, it was interesting too in the film too. Uh, uh, when Karina, I, I forget the person's name, was just talking about uh, how like he has like different voices in his head. Uh, he had a name for. Gone? Sean uh, or Kevin, like uh, no, it, it was like that would have been Kevin. I think who has different voices, but or it could be could be Sasha too. Yeah, I, th I, I think it was Kevin. It was actually Kevin. 
Yeah, it was, it was Kevin. Yeah. And uh, just how, like, if you listen to the voice too, like, even if it's like angry, it's usually like saying some kind of truth or something in your subconscious right. and everything. And that's like, it's so fascinating to me. And even like, and we just, all have these, think yeah. about, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Oh, it's okay. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. No, but what I was going to say is that we, we, you know, like we all have these different, like I, what I really responded to was when, Sasha was saying, you know, like we all have these different drives and voices in us. And it's a question is who's driving the bus, right? Because it's mm, like, yeah. because even the, the so-called average person, the normal person still has all these voices inside their head kind of saying either like, you know, they have might have a voice saying, you know, oh, you'll never make it. You're a loser. And this other person, that's other voice saying, well, it comes up another time and it's to kind of go, oh no, you're, you're great. And, and it's like, these things are struggling within you all the time. And it's like you say, it's like finding that that cent that central voice, that voice that you kind of feel, okay, this is the voice that's actually on my side. It's actually like helping me grow, and locating that voice, and really like it's an actually kind of an active process, right? It's like you kind of go like, we 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 all have because we don't think about this stuff, we're all sort of victims to it. Oh my god, you know, and like I I know from my I mean to be completely I mean just as you got personal, I had struggled with, with anger, right? Mm -hmm. And now I reckon recognize that as a, as a voice. It's sort of like, you have to say, okay, fair enough. And then, and then it just, once you hear it and, and then sit with it, it just, you're just kind of like, it can go away. It can become, it can be, it can shrink, right? But you have to acknowledge these different voices within you. And yeah. that's the thing. It's like, it's for the average person. I think it's like, we also have these tribes and these conflicts within our heads, you know? And uh, some people hear it out here, yeah. but if we hear it on in here, but it's the same principle. Like it's like sort of like- mm -hmm. It is these... the same principle. There's a, there's a TED talk, one of the most listened to TED talks about hearing voices by this woman named Eleanor Langdon. And she was in university when she started hearing these negative voices, like, oh, you're worthless and all this stuff. And then she told, um, sadly, she told her friend and her friend said, you should go see a psychiatrist and her psychiatrist put her on hardcore and labeled her schizophrenic. Oh, and then man. she was, and so she now is the leader of what's called the hearing voices movement, which is basically these voices have a role. They're teaching you something. They're saying mm. something. Maybe that yeah. voice was her mom saying you, you're a piece of shit, you know, yeah. that, but you know, whatever. But if you don't acknowledge it and if yeah. you don't recognize where it comes from, then they overpower you. But if you just kind of go, Oh, okay. Those have, you know, and like one of the things that Kevin says is identify who does that voice remind you of? Because it, it actually, the voice takes on a role in your head. Like, like you said, like it's typical examples, your mom and your dad, mm -hmm. or like this bully, or like, and it's like these voices are actually, um, they kind of, kind of like not even personified, but it's sort of like the kind of representations in your head of these people that have had, had different influences in your life. Right. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. 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 I, I also like, like to go back to like seeing like different type of people on the street to uh, who are seem troubled or whatever. I notice a bit of a pattern, like the ones who are always like kind of outbursting and yelling and seem very angry. Like I never see them harming people around them, but it's almost like there's a simulated argument that they had going on and it could have been in their past or something where they're like, it's like real deep and it could have been like with their parents or somebody like yeah. they grew oh, yeah. up with yeah. or whatever. It just seems like there's like this narrative that they're replaying in their head, but instead of keeping it on the inside, they're yelling it out, like projecting. Yeah, they've, it. Lost, they've lost their rational, like that rational side. Right. And so Kevin mm -hmm. in the film is, is he literally, that's what he does as a job. He is a hearing voices support worker and he works with the homeless population now in Toronto like and he literally talks to people's voices as a form of therapy yeah he says can you, do you want can your voices talk to me directly and they do like the people start kind of going like you know i i mean i don't want to speak for kevin because it's like he's, kevin is a very complex man but but it's like yeah that's what he does and he kind of he has people open open themselves up through their voices to kind of say you know you know like sometimes they kind of go um kevin this is mark one of my voices he wants to say something and boom and then mark says something so it's almost like this very interesting way of getting in touch with different sides of your psyche, you know, like almost like, okay, this, so it's like, once you acknowledge them and you can see them and you can see what, hear what they're saying, then you can grow from that, right? You can, you can 
start folk you could start sort of like finding a, a way of moving forward you know in a way yeah, definitely i love near the the end of the movie too that uh you kind of uh see karina's journey and near the end she's like setting out to actually help people herself yeah. and like being very active in that way and i i thought that was like such a a cool like full circle thing and yeah. i just want to ask like like how how is she doing now is she still pursuing that direction yeah, and it's really good she's like she's really got amazing. a puppy so she's oh, really cool. happy she's living on her own she's working she's and she's this one. is somebody probably where psychiatry were like, oh, you know, like she she's can't actually, do anything. Yeah, she's working with, uh, she's right now she's working with old, like older people, like, you know, and so, and so she's like going to their home and kind of uh, spending time and kind of like, like a personal support worker, but more like a, somebody who just sort of like company, you know, company. Yeah. And, but she, she definitely wants to get into peer support as well. And she's done a ton of peer support in the past on the phone and different organizations like you see in the film talking to people and she really um that's where she, that's where she really shines when she's really helping people and mm -hmm. she loves she's a very giving sweet person very sensitive and just a, just yeah just a good soul you know yeah she's she's, she's so talented and amazing that's like what i got out of that film and it's oh, thank it's, you. it's cool to sweetheart. She's yeah, a very yeah. Sweet yeah and, and raised by amazing parents too like uh, a, 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 stop <laughs> don't stop <laughs> yeah yeah but again like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna stop i can keep going but one thing I, <laughs> drink it in drink it in but uh, thank you, thank you. but um but i find you, like saying that it's it's uh it's it's beautiful too like uh beyond like documenting it you can really see both of your intentions and and overall patience too because i also feel like uh i've known people who have struggled with their mental health too and maybe their parents or whatever not to knock them i feel like their parents were trying to do their best but the lack of almost understanding and i think just to go full circle what we were talking about at the beginning of this interview of just trying to label uh the conditions into like a certain box it's like okay they're gonna need this pill because they're this way where you can really tell that you two took the the time to just explore and be patient and really like yeah again like i can just keep saying the the term like take your time with it and just see how things shift and flow whether it's with art different Medita medications talking to different people therapy too and just it's beautiful to see like all that come together in you taking us on that journey and then at the end of the film seeing such a positive result from that so like oh, kudos to both of you, you for you guys, that as well well we well that scene with gabor mate is like the the kind of the third act which is like the the height of the kind of uh, what do you call it? the climax of the film and that was like that was intense because he he does intensive work and it was very painful to go through that. And I think we had to take responsibility to, like, we were loving parents, but we struggled during, Peter and I had a, you know, we, we were both work, worked in the media and had, we were at time, we went through a difficult part, part in our marriage, but we, we fought, but it wasn't like crazy fighting, but we, but we didn't know that she was so sensitive that she took that on. Yeah. We, and we fought like, you know, like we fought that like we didn't fight in front of the kids. We try to keep it in wraps, but when you're in a house, you know, mm -hmm. and like the kids are very like, Karina's very like aware. Like she's almost like a little, like a, like, a, you know, she, 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 sponge, yeah. she <laughs> takes everything in. And so even as quiet as, as sort of like discreet as we tried to be, you know stuff stuff got through to her and the energy got through to her and yeah, yeah and it's sort of like you know and you know it's not we're not uncommon in terms of having marital issues but but like Karina um really took it to heart and she claimed herself and like you know in the film and, it, and that was very hard for us to hear um but it was super also important for us to hear and also very um made us grow as people to, to a large extent because you know like you know when, when you're a parent you try to you tend to think of yourself as oh you know I'm so different from my parents my parents got it all wrong I got you know I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm enlightened and I'm just like a pal to my kids and stuff like that but no matter how hard you try I mean it's like you know it's like that's it's like you know parents have to understand that 
you know, like, like Gabor says, there's no blame because we, we, all, we only, we have messages from our parents from generations back and stuff. And then we kind of think, this is the way you raise kids and this is the way it's okay to be like this. But it's like, and, and without even meaning to, we do so much damage, you know, and, and just acknowledging that as parents is super important. And, and really like, and it's, it's very healing for the children to kind of hear their parents say, you know, honestly, you know, I'm sorry. I know some of the damage is done, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was like, I wasn't sensitive enough or like, you know, yeah. all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And we, we had to go through that. And that was very healing for Karina actually yeah. to hear us kind of say, yeah, we're part of this situation. It's like, you know, in, in our city, in our culture, we blame everything on the individual, but that individual yeah. is, comes from a context and that context and those people that, you know, that shape that individual come from a context and goes generations back. And it's sort of like, we're stuck in this, Mm. you know in this kind of cycle of just like passing on our trauma and our bullshit to other people so can i switch sorry our yeah yeah you can say whatever you like <laughs> yeah. um anyway so it's like it's so yeah that's a that's a big actually uh theme in the film too is this idea it's true that we have a tendency in our world to blame the individual it's your brain it's your fault it's your brain chemistry your faulty brain chemistry which now has been tr proven to be untrue. That's not even a, a correct narrative. And so what we're doing is bringing it back to the collective. No, we have to look at things collectively again and support. And how that it. person fits into the collective. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I yeah. mean, I'm really glad that when, when you talk about the film, I'm glad you, you totally got the main message and you really seem to have, you know, really understood. What, what it is because it's like you know it's sort of like it's sort of like there's a lot going on but it's mm -hmm. basically our way of just trying to connect to our daughter and trying to guide her as best we could and capture that but also it's a lot of it came from I mean we can't take um, credit for getting out of her hole she did that I mean she mm -hmm. she's a strong person she can we just kind of we were there for her when we were more in the way any way that we could but she did that all by herself. She's an incredibly strong person. She is, but but also because we did it as a family, like documenting this, doing our documenting our journey together, that was important. Oh, so you funny. know the the film is the hero's journey. It's like it's it's going through. You're facing. You're stepping into the unknown. You're facing your demons and monsters. It's terrifying, and you're meeting all these interesting people along the way, and then you come back and you share your elixirs with the world. Right? It is. And like I said, you know, in a previous interview, that's seen as a cliche in documentary media to do the hero's journey. But that is a really empowering narrative for all of us in terms of our mental health. And it doesn't have to mean one time journey. It could be a fucking day. Mm -hmm. It could be like, I feel like shit today, but I'm going to step out and I'm going to face things and I'm going to go through my shit and then I'm going to meet some people and come back. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, you were, you were so right when saying, you know, the being patient with people, because I think that's, that's, that's a really important thing to kind of go like, you know, when somebody's going through something, not to, not to define them like, Oh, you're like this. Oh yeah. Because I feel like, no, like let that person go through their process and like try to figure out and support them in their, in their, what they're going through and they will find their way out but we're so impatient we're so like mm -hmm. oh no, you're this you're that we have to get treatment right and it's like tree okay no treatment is good i'm not saying treatment yeah. is not bad but i'm saying is we we have we just jumped to a conclusion about then we just kind of like talk about this person being this and that and labeling them instead of just saying this person's just going through a process we just have to yeah patient and support totally. them right yeah There's that's so well said it's Thank true. There, there's there, there's a film called Cracked Up, the Daryl Ham, you know, Daryl Hammond from SNL. Yeah, yeah. He played uh he played uh Clinton and like he was a famous, he was on on SNL forever. And uh he was also labeled with I don't know how many diagnoses. And then he just had a really good psychiatrist one day. Oh, and the psychiatrist was like, you know what, I don't care about all your diagnoses. What is your story? Tell oh story. okay yeah yeah and he got and he because this guy struggled with drug addiction he struggled with like a lot of comics like a lot of artists he <laughs> had a lot of pain and the film goes into his pain like what happened to him and he was horribly abused as a child oh, wow. and he so it goes into his story and it's like oh well this all makes sense now like why do we not 
fucking ask a story of the person's story. Like that's yeah, that's a very good point because actually, um, the the like you know when when you think because now the idea is that the del the so called delusions like the the people the things that people are seeing when they're in the, these extreme states are all just kind of like noise and don't mean anything. But what I found with Karina, um, just talking through her, is her delusions, like her stories, they're just very elaborate stories that people are living with and living through, um, made complete sense if you look at her life story. Like everything just kind of completely, she didn't want to talk about her delusions in her in, in the movie, which is totally fine, which is which I totally respect. But her delusions in the movie, in the, like in real life, it can be traced back to her life experiences and, and traumas and things and her ideas and stuff. It all they all make sense within the person. So, you know, it's it's almost like it's all just like a big part of what the struggle, right? It's like and somebody like Kevin or people who can really understand this can help people by hearing their story can help people uh, kind of go through that and like yeah. understand it and like sort of like find path path through it. Yeah, and medications, we're not saying, we're of, of mind, because there tends to be a division in this in the, this this field or whatever, This that it's either you're pro-psychiatry or anti-psychiatry, and we're not anti-psychiatry. I, I want to put that out there. Karina takes medication. We take, I mean, who doesn't have drugs in their life? We all like drugs. Like, so we have to cope with <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right, it's like okay, pharma. Okay, there's, well, a, there's a marijuana. Yeah, store yeah there's a marijuana. Store. Even for people, just caffeine. You know, people need their morning every day. Yeah, everything. Exactly. Right. Caffeine. So it's kind of like you have to learn your drugs. And alcohol. Some, I mean, alcohol yeah. and like uh, magic mushrooms. People are mm -hmm. doing that to cope with life, like or just to get a different perspective. Microdosing, like it's huge. Like we're in this air you know we, we 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 need our drugs so I mean, we're not saying that drugs aren't important sometimes especially in the world that we live in but we're just asking people to flesh out the narrative a little bit it's not let's say like gabor says something really interesting i'll just quickly say this like yeah. he says uh you know like the whole the, the, like, if you think about it like um if you have a headache and uh your pain goes away because you take aspirin or you take tylenol uh, then the 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 the, it, the people don't say oh well you, you have an aspirin imbalance mm, yeah or that's true you go to a party you know you're kind of shy and you're like a little bit reserved and you you take some alcohol or you drink some alcohol a couple beers and you're like all of a sudden a little bit more loose and you're gregarious oh well you have an alcohol imbalance mm, so this yeah. is a, that's what it is it's like it's not it's not that's it's an improper way of looking at things it's like saying yeah, oh drugs. all of a sudden you have oh you're not it's not like karina has an imbalance it's just it's just these drugs help you in some way cope with life she yeah. thinks karma yeah. is more her pusher than and it's street drugs you know it's harder with street drugs because they're not as uh you know regulated yeah very yeah. very well said with that too it's very true too and i think like again like uh the, with the whole narrative of treating people too you just gotta look at each person's an individual you know it's just yeah you can't just put them in the box put the stamp on here's the pill get the fuck out of my doctor's office type of exactly. attitude you gotta again like and and the people will see this through the process of the film too uh, the power of taking it step by step and looking at all different ways and seeing the ebbs and flows and just going with the flow of what works for this person because one thing might work for Karina that might not work for somebody else you know it's just you gotta find their thing but uh yeah just like lastly I just want to say this is a beautiful film and I think everybody should watch it and thank you <laughs> it's very it's it was funny too it's just like even like we we touched on like so many things and I feel like I could talk to you for five hours about this yeah. it's uh even thank like you. a one you're great thank you for, for hey, yeah that. thanks for thanks for doing this we really really appreciate it oh and you really anytime really gotten some of the film and we're happy we're really happy about that once again, thank you, Michelle and Pedro, for that incredible talk. Uh, felt like I walked away with that one with a broader perspective on so many things. And I appreciate that so, so, so much. This is what the show is all about. And I hope you guys listening felt the same. And before we go, we got to give a special thanks to all you legends on the Patreon. I missed you. Sorry we lacked a bit of content the last month. 
I mentioned in the intro, I had to take care of some things, uh, some life things got in the way. But now that that side of shit is in order, we can bombard you with amazing content and beyond having a few more episodes recorded. I got some amazing people, like always, lined up for you. Well, biggest thanks to the co-producer, Jeremy Hopkin of Hopkin Design. The Queen, Ola Mazuka of Sonic Fold. Ryan Watkins of Ryan Radio. Amanda McKnight of Top 10 Nerd. Pat Maloney, Ryan Campbell, Daniel Sun, Devin Staple, Mike Ulio, Jenny Potter, Jared Pepper Bronstein, AKA Mr. Spicy, always oh, so hot. And last but not least, Francis Coffer aka my mom thanks again and if you'd like to get a shout out and to hear all these conversations early you can check out our page at patreon.com slash the creative imbalance every penny goes back into the show and it is much appreciated but once again it's good to be back and thank you all for listening and we got more for you really soon see you next week